Professor Claire Rickard with the NHMRC Centre for Research Excellence in Nursing Interventions for Hospitalised Patients and I'm also the lead of the Australian Vascular Access Teaching and Research Group. I started working in research in 1997 and I was just intrigued uh, having been a clinical nurse at the wide variation in clinical practices, how nurses and doctors were caring for a vascular access devices. So at that stage I was mainly interested in the intensive care central lines and arterial lines that they use there. But as I worked around the different hospitals I couldn't help notice that uh, on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays they would perform a certain procedure to care for the central lines and prevent infection but then at another hospital they only performed that procedure once a week or not at all and they all were convinced that they were protecting the patients from infection and I was just really intrigued as to whether we could sort that out and try and give some definite advice to clinical nurses and doctors on how to look after those vascular access devices. I'm really interested in preventing complications in all sorts of uh, intravascular devices. So we know that uh, nearly every person that comes into hospital around the world will have some sort of IV catheter, whether it's for routine surgery, a major accident, or chemotherapy, uh, nutrition, etc. And we also know that about one quarter of all of those devices will fail. So at some point, while the patient still needs them for treatment, they'll just stop working, they'll become occluded, perhaps fall out, or become infected, which is of course a very very serious complication. Some of the most exciting research we've done in recent years is about uh, extending the dwell time or the use of the small peripheral IV catheters that are used in the hand or arm. So traditionally there's been a lot of extra pain for patients to have regular insertions of those catheters because it was believed that they had to be taken out and discarded every two, three or four days. But we've now shown it's quite safe to leave those in as long as they're working, as long as there's no sign of complication or the patient needs them. The other really exciting uh, results we've had more recently is about the dressing and securement of those uh, small catheters. So we know that about 10% of those just fall out or become dislodged and we find that really hard to accept given that hospitals spend billions of dollars every year on securing those devices with dressings and tapes and so on. So some of the research we've lately done has shown that we can reduce the failure of those devices from as high as 38% of catheters down to as low as 5%. So that's preliminary findings but we're uh, currently extending those in large multi-centre uh, trials funded by the National Health and Medical Research Council. Well, we really need to get into the uh, minds and hearts of our clinical staff that we can't just accept IV catheter failure. We need to really um, change the attitude that uh, failure can be prevented in all sorts of vascular access device and that the time and money we spend on clinical procedures such as dressing, such as flushing, how we insert those catheters, how we monitor them, how we decide to remove them, how we can come to a stance of our IVs do not fail rather than oh well they always fail. So we think that we can really influence the clinical practice guidelines in those areas and we're working very closely with nurses and doctors at many hospitals to do that. We have a very large and very dynamic team working out of Griffith University but in partnership with hospitals around Australia and clinicians and un universities around the world. So we have a very multidisciplinary approach. We work with nurses and doctors from uh, intensive care, from chemotherapy, nutrition, emergency department, the gen general medical surgical areas, and even in the community where we're seeing more IV catheters being used. We spread our research not just in one area, but across all. So we look at paediatric patients and adult patients. And we also uh, bring in a lot of expertise from other disciplines such as microbiology, infectious diseases, uh, health statistics and economics because it's really uh, with that entire team of people tackling these difficult problems that we can get the best result.